you know that title is a lie. So a question I always get is about my audio routing into Ableton. And the reason I've been putting this video off is mainly because my setup is always changing. I'm constantly swapping things in and out, but I guess the other side of that is that the audio interface as well as the patch bay has pretty much stayed the same for, I don't know, five, six years now. So uh, yeah, there's two main ways that I do this. So let's kind of run through the session and figure it out. <laughs> I actually pulled the trigger and told myself to put the MPC away a few days, but I'm bringing it back to show you how I have it. So with the MPC 3000, I actually utilize all 10 audio outputs. That doesn't mean that I actually use all 10 when it comes to making music. I just have them ready to go and plugged into the back of the patch bay. This means I can easily override any of the channels that I'm not using. So as far as the patch bay goes, I've been using this Neutrik uh, SPP whatever NYS patch bay. It's a 24 point or 48 point patch bay. It's uh, it's a little grindy and gross, but it gets the job done. And on top of that, what we have next is the Octopre Dynamic by Focusrite, and then we have the Claret 8 Pre by Focusrite. Full disclosure, I work at Novation. Novation is owned by Focusrite. I got these for cheap, but I've been using Focusrite since before I worked there, and I love them. They've never failed me or anything. And the Octopre is dope because you got the uh, built-in compressor per channel. And saying that out loud, I probably should have routed the MPC into the compressor channels. Oops. And the way these two work is this red one here, which is the Claret, is my main interface. The Thunderbolt out of this is going into my little Mac Mini. And then this additional eight mic pre's, they're full-blown microphone preamps, but I only use them for their line in over ADAT, ADAT, it's a fiber optic cable, and that goes out of this into here and just ties those two together, which allows me to have 16 inputs. At one point, I had the Claret 8 Pre X, which has dual ADAT, and I had 24 inputs going at once, but that was just way too intense, way too many things going on. So I kind of pulled the plug, saved one U of space, and went with the 8 Pre instead. One little annoyance about the 8 Pre is that channels one and two are actually on the front of the unit. So I literally am just going out of the MPC, which is one and two, into the front of one and two here because there's no mic pre on the back or the line input on the back. It's one, two on the front, then three through eight on the back. And another thing that gets a little confusing is that this Octopre, when used with ADAT into the Focusrite, the Focusrite actually has a loop back channel, which is on channels nine and 10, and then I think 11 and 12 get taken up by something else. No, wait, wait, wait. Nine and 10 is used for something else. Maybe SPDIF, no, maybe. And then 11 and 12 are used for loopback, which allows you to resample your computer. So then Octopre actually starts on 13 through 20, not nine through 16. So it gets a little confusing. I've gone ahead and just labeled my patch bay with the proper numbers down below. That way in Ableton, I actually know what the hell is going on. But as far as audio interface goes, that's really it. I have 16 inputs, which is 10 coming from the MPC 3000. Then I believe I have peak on 13, 14, um, whatever my base synth is. In this case, it's my modular setup is on 15. 16 is the Deckards. 17 is the JV 1080. 18 is, I don't even remember anymore. 20 is my microphone. 19 is something. So clearly I'm not even using as many as I need and you totally don't need to. And I found that when I was using 24 inputs, I was trying to find a reason to use everything and it was just not happening. I was just cluttering stuff up. All right, so now into Ableton. So this here is my 3K default template. This is very specific to the MPC 3000 and I call it the 3K default template because it's not actually my default template when Ableton starts up. That's for the second setup I use, which we'll get to in a second. So the way this setup is, is it allows me to just sample anything from my computer directly into the MPC 3000 and then the first eight pads of the MPC 3000 go directly into these first eight tracks. And then 3K LR, this track right here, is actually the left and right output of the MPC 3000. Because remember I said it has 10 outputs. So one through eight, nine and 10 as a stereo pair. And that's if I wanna use the delay inside the MPC 3000, which is actually pretty good. 
After that, I just have these three audio tracks ready to just do whatever. And then I, of course, have my ERM multi-clock track, which is pretty much necessary in all of my setups. So the way I'm able to sample directly into the MPC-3000 is on the patch bay, there's a 24 points of patching on the patch bay. The first 16 are dedicated to the inputs of my audio interface for the Claret as well as the Octopri. Patches 17 through 24 are actually outputs of my Claret. So check this. If I go into focus right control, this allows me to actually set up different routing. So you can see here, nine and 10, seven and eight. So nine and 10 and seven and eight, these are both set up to be playback one and two. What is playback? Playback is whatever is happening on my computer. So if I go here, you can see there that the levels are still kind of fading. So let me just do one of, I'll do this one. So boom. That's three, uh, those are all playback one and two. So anything that's happening on my computer, if I go and play a YouTube video, it'll show up there. If I play Spotify, it'll show up there. So nine and 10, I just have one of those cables going into the back of the MPC 3000. This again, allows me to just quickly say, actually, let me actually hear what the hell I'm doing. Sure. So what I can do on the MPC, is I say program, sample, waiting for input and I just sample that. And the reason you don't hear it on the computer is because I don't have the left and right plugged in right now. The three K's outputs are a little scratchy. So I'm just gonna go ahead and keep this sound done. And if I assign this to one of the pads, you can see pad one is track one. So this is just kind of how it goes. If I were to assign this sample to all eight pads, as I go track one or pad one, pad two, pad three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then nine and 10 would be all the rest of the pads through all the other banks. And you can also hear that there's a little bit of difference in volume. And that's because on these tracks on the audio interface, I've already kind of tuned the gain knob because sometimes the hi-hats come a little sharp, kicks need a little bit more gain. So they're all a little different. They're not set to the same gain. It's just kind of set to things that I already have. And honestly, this is a new Mac mini. And on my old laptop, each of the tracks already had EQs on them, like cutting out a lot of the lows. I really liked putting a little reverb on my claps and snares. So those were already pre-built into the channels, but that's really it. It's super simple. It's really easy to just kind of get something going. Like let's say we want to clap, record, keep, done. I'll assign that to here. And then if I want a hi-hat, sure. Uh, sound, sample, record that, keep, done, assign here. Cool, so now if I go back to the main, I can just say, cool, let's go ahead and make a beat. Wow, did I do that right? Holy crap, I can't even hear the metronome. And I've used 124 for years now that I was able to just kind of play it in. Nice. And then of course. So immediately my MPC 3000 is just being tracked in to Ableton Live separately. There's a kick, there's the uh, clap, and then the hi-hats. Actually, I've been using these lately, the uh, Good Hertz. This, uh, what is it called? The uh, Mega Delay, Mega Verb, there it is. Actually kind of tight, they got all these like old, uh, historical ones, Bruce Springsteen, Paul Simon, one of my favorites. And honestly, that's really it when it comes to using this. As far as the effects, I mainly use Ableton for a lot of its effects or simple plugins or ones like these, like from the Good Hurt stuff. And if I really want it, I use pedals in a very specific manner, mainly to my sampling um, through the patch bay at, in the same way that I showed in that other patch bay video. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's, it's beyond straightforward. And same with the multi-clock going, I can control the MPC 3000. There's not much to it when it comes to audio routing. And the other thing too is, let's say I only used those three tracks with the patch bay, I can just plug directly into the front of it of any other synthesizer that I want. And I don't have to worry about unplugging and replugging the MPC 3000 out of the back or anything like that. Oh, and another side note, I almost never work 
in uh, session view. I mainly work in the arrangement view. And this is a topic for a whole different thing because I'm still trying to figure out what the hell I'm doing because I'm, I'm just trying to figure out which one do I prefer. Do I like session? Do I not? Because I've been using the launch key because it's cool with the, you can grab the clips and same with push and the Launchpad Pro and stuff. But I have this fear of not catching the tail end of synthesizers and sometimes effects and just having it get chopped off by the clips. So that kind of worries me a little bit sometimes. So I stick to this which is pretty straightforward when it comes to making music, but then I constantly have this battle of trying to fully use this as a sequencer and then halfway finishing it off in the uh, Ableton Live as a sequencer, and it kind of just makes me lose the vibe. But again, that's a topic for a different time. So the other way I like to route things is with Overbridge. So for that template, it's actually my default template. So if I were to go to File and just hit New Live Set, it would start like this, which doesn't have the MPC stuff in it anymore, but it does have this, which is the Analog Rhythm Mark II. And I've been borrowing this one just to see if I want to buy the black one. And this is also what made me put the MPC 3000 back into storage for a little bit. Um, and I like it a lot. It's really fun. It's really good. I'll probably end up picking up the black one. The eight voices is a little limiting but it's a different way to make music and Overbridge is incredible because I literally just have a USB cable plugged into the back of this thing and it sends everything. So look, pad one. Everything goes straight into Ableton Live. You can see the tracks right here. So all I've done here is now I have these two small tracks here and if I were to expand both of these open these up. We just have the multi-clock track, which actually we don't need to worry about, but then the rhythm track. If I were to open up the rhythm track, this just gives me all access to the rhythm stuff. But what's cool is I can just have this set to off or just muted, which is the case here. Let me go ahead and turn that off. And then on these tracks, if I were to expand this a little bit, and let me just go ahead, put this into geezer mode real quick. Zoom display. Oh, that is way too big. Okay. So all I've done here is say, take audio from Rhythm MIDI or Rhythm, Bo Beats in the house. We got BD, snare drum, all eight voices here, plus the inputs if you're running inputs into this thing. I don't because the way I sample it into this thing is the same way I sample into the MPC. Actually, you know what? I'll show you that right now. So I have this, which is again coming out of the patch bay, the last one. And if I were to just go into my audio input, here, I can then just say, cool, sample, it's already ready to go. And if I go back to my samples here, you can see it already just automatically comes into here, which is awesome and great. So then I can just sample whatever I want, as fast as I want, quickly, easily. And then all of the audio channels, again, get sent over into Ableton Live over a USB cable. And sometimes, the rhythm is a little hot. So what I would do is I would just get all eight of these, group them, and then just turn it down here as a whole. So if I were to press play. Right, so this is just kind of a typical thing. What else do I have on here? Maybe this might be embarrassing. Very embarrassing. I don't think I made that. I don't know if I made that. It sounds like something I would though. I actually don't know if I made that. Oh, I think I remember this one. No, that is not me. What? Oh, you know what happened? I think that horn sample was supposed to be something else. Anyway, I'm just digging myself a deeper grave. All this stuff is then sent over into here and I can apply effects. Again, I can go and grab, uh, I don't know, one of these, uh, Good Hertz things, uh, the Wolf Compressor, classic. Slam it. That sounds cool. <laughs> but again, what's crazy here is all of this automation that I'm doing can get recorded into here, into the rhythm track. I did that the first time. I per honestly, me personally, don't like working that way, 
But when it did do it, I saw that it could be a benefit of being able to record in all the automation of you muting tracks and doing things. But this is just fun because then I just say, cool, grab all these tracks, hit record, and then just record this in. And surprisingly, the, um, the latency of this is insanely good. So watch, if I bring the kicks in, God, this track is terrible. And we're gonna look at this. If I zoom in here, like what is up? A little early, okay, I will say that, but I mean, it's not even a millisecond early. That's awesome, that's really, really cool. So the fact that it can do this is insane. And um, it's all over USB, which is nuts, which is why I loved the DigiTact, but I kind of stopped using it just for a couple different reasons. But this thing is so much fun. And honestly, yeah, after this video, I'm putting the 3K back in storage because I've been trying to force myself to learn something new because I find myself continuously kind of doing the same things and making the same song on the MPC 3000 um, every time I turn it on. And honestly, I had a very similar experience when it came to using Machine. Machine was so fast for me to make a song. I could make a song without even listening to what I was doing. I can just put the pattern in, boom, 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 da, 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 bass, bass, kick, kick, clap, 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 hit play, and I'd be like, awesome, this sounds great. And then I was like, wait a minute, I think I made this song yesterday. So speed is good, but sometimes doing things really fast, I kind of miss the point of making music, which is enjoying the process. Like this stuff makes me really happy. But if something is, I'm so fast at something like the 3000 or the original machine, um, I just kind of blow past all the fun, creative aspects of making music. So just remember to take a deep breath once in a while, have some fun. And yeah, that's my audio routing. It's not complicated at all. It's insanely simple. As many inputs as I have, they run into their own tracks, did a couple latency tests to make sure everything's locked in good and I am good to go. So um, yeah, hope to see you again next time. Thanks again for hanging out. If you want to support, buy some sample packs or hats or whatever, check out the link. It's right there in the description below that like button. But until next time, you already know the drill. Share the love, share the knowledge. Knowledge is power. Peace. Do I want to play us out to this garbage thing? Yeah, whatever. Let's do it. <laughs> this is terrible. You know what? I don't want to be associated with this. I'll leave it with that. You know what? I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just leave. <laughs>